Hi, welcome back to Forensic Education. I'm Sergeant Mike McCutcheon. Today I'm going to show you how to test blood stains to see whether or not they're human blood or whether it's animal blood. So I'm going to show you a couple things. The first thing I'm going to do is put my, my gloves on. And what we'll be testing for when we're testing for human blood is actually the hemoglobin in the blood. When we're testing with other products, they may be testing for the proteins in the blood, but we want to make sure that what we're testing is for human blood. So what we're going to test to do a presumptive blood test is we're going to use these quick check blood stain green. They're very simple and easy to use, but it's just going to tell you that your stain is blood, but not whether or not it's human or animal blood. So it comes in a little package. And inside the package, you have your swab and a dropper. So what we're going to do is I'm going to be testing some dried blood. Now you can see on this, and it may be difficult to see because it's on a black tile, but there's some dried blood on here. And if you didn't know that it was blood, you may mis uh, misinterpret it as something else. So the first thing we're going to do is I'm going to take some distilled water. I'm just going to wet the tip. And I'm going to put this in for close up. And I'm going to swab my stain. Now you can see that I have quite a bit of material on there. So now before we test that, now I'm going to go to my dropper. Inside the dropper, there's two ampules, one on the bottom, one on the top. When you break them, make sure you're holding it up because if you hold it upside down when you break them, it's going to leak out before you get to put it on your stain. So I'm going to break the two ampules. I'm going to break the bottom one. And just use the little paper sleeve to make sure it doesn't poke through. I'm going to break the second one. Okay, so now what we're going to do is I'm going to go back in for a close-up and I'm going to drip this on my stain. Oops. Now you can see that it's turning green, which would be a preliminary test that this is blood. Now again, we don't know if this is animal blood or human blood, so now we got to check to see whether or not this is something we want to collect as evidence. So for example, I took this piece of carpet and there's a dark stain on it. Now whether or not this is a blood stain or something else, you couldn't tell. If this was in a house that was very dirty, several crime scenes usually aren't in pristine places and they're usually filthy. So when you have something like this, you wouldn't know whether you want to take this as evidence or not. A quick check is an inexpensive, easy way to see if it's blood. Now that it's blood, you want to know whether or not this is human or not. So what we're going to do to test for that is we're going to use these, the hexagon OBTI tests. So inside the test kit, you have a small little ampule with liquid inside. And then a packet of the actual applicator. So now we have to collect our sample. So the way we're going to do that is I'm going to use a cotton swab. I'm going to wet it again with my distilled water. And now I'm going to swab my stain. Now what you could do is you're going to unscrew your kit. And now I've done it both ways where I've scraped some, and I'll show you that, into it, or where I've just used the, the tip and mixed it in there. Another way that you could do this to test, and I wouldn't do this in one test if I are in the field, but if you had some dried blood like we had on here, is you could scrape it into your druggist fold like so 
And then you could put some of your scraping. And I don't know if you were able to catch that, but I just put some of that scraping in here. Now this stuff is so sensitive, the material that I put in here is going to be more than enough. So then I'm going to just screw this back on. And I'm going to shake that up. And while I let that sit for a second, I'm going to open up my test. OK, so your test here, if we can get in on that, what it's going to show is the sample where we're going to put our sample. And then two lines are going to appear, one under C, which is control, which is going to show that the test is working. And then the other one is the T. And if that shows a line, that's going to show that there's a presence of human blood, that it's going to test that the hemoglobin in the blood. So this is how we're going to do that. We're going to break the tip off here. You can see I just broke the tip. So now that that's open, I'm going to put this in for close up. You're going to put exactly three drops into the sample. One, two, three drops. Now that's going to soak up. You can see it coming along the top there. I'm just going to wait a few minutes for that to soak all the way up. Now if you look carefully, you can see the test is coming up with a line and so is the control. Well, it's not quite at the control. There it is. You can see that there's two lines. So that's going to be a positive test. The blood test that we just scraped and that I mixed in there is testing positive for human blood. And there's the two lines. Now when we're using our test kit here, that second line that's going to show that it's a positive test can be very, very faint. That's still going to be a positive test. If the control line doesn't uh, light up, then you have a bad test and you need, to, you need to retry it. Now you have to be careful when you're doing this. Now these tests have, uh, these tests have been uh, recommended to test for human blood, but they will also pick up and give you a positive result if you were you testing blood that came from um, a primate or something like that. Animal blood's not going to affect it, most animals I should say. Um, deer, birds, um, raccoons, things like that aren't going to give you a positive test. But if you do have primates, you may get a positive test. Um, but that's it, that's pretty simple. Now that you have your positive test, you know that it's human blood. That's important for your case. Now you can swab this for DNA using your swabs, package that up properly. And remember, the most important thing is take pictures of everything. I would take a picture of this for my evidence and make sure that this gets sent um, in with my case so that there can be no mistake that I did it properly. Um, I hope that answers your questions on how to test for human blood. You can get all these products at lynnpv.com and you can watch more videos on how to process forensic uh, evidence at forensiceducation.net. Thanks for watching.